Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new adventure. Today we're coming to you from the town of Alfred, Pennsylvania. That may sound familiar because I was here just under a year ago to film a video about two really cool structures here. Over here behind me here is the abandoned train station built in 1915 for the DL and W Railroad. It was the uh, second one built after the first one burned down that was originally built in 1911. And over here, as I walk across, we will see in the distance here a really cool switching tower. And that one's really cool because upstairs there's some old levers to switch the tracks for the different train traffic. But last time I was here, we couldn't get upstairs because there was no active stairwell, no steps, no ladder. But I did bring some equipment this time to hopefully at least get my camera stuck up to the top to get a view to see what it looks like. So come along with me as you do a revisit of the abandoned train station here in Alfred, Pennsylvania. So joining me once again today for our second adventure is Mike from Mount Naturing. You'll find his link down below in the description. And this one, just like usual, has gone downhill from the last time. A lot more of roller graffiti. Just a shame. As you can see too, we're not alone. There is some other people here checking out the structures. So we're kind of down here doing our own thing until they decide to move away from the train station. But uh, without wasting more time though, let's get inside. The architecture on this though is so amazing. I said this would be a great little home. And there's the upstairs. You can see the levers are still there. Let me get you a closer look at them. I believe they're called strong arm levers because it literally took a strong arm to move those. And that corner there would be a spiral staircase. Last time I was here, the only good piece of graffiti was the Monopoly Man, and he's been painted over. But beautiful architecture, curved windows, the archway, entryway. So I'm going to implement some new equipment here. I got a long extended monopod and the DJI Osmo Action Action Camera. I'm gonna to mount to that. Hopefully it'll be long enough to reach up to there and get you some footage. I know Mike said he's gonna see if he can find a way up as well. Originally there would have been a spiral staircase right here, which has been removed, but people have definitely been up there. There's graffiti up there. And people recommend also flying a drone up there, which is possible, but if you crash it, I won't have a way to get it back down. So let's see if we get some footage up there. Get that up there? You want it?
So big thanks to Mike for climbing up there and sticking the GoPro up there. Not the GoPro, the uh, Osmo Action. We got some great footage, but uh, just to show you before we move on, these arms up here, you can see them sticking out. Those are attached obviously to the arms up top, the strong end arms. And um, these have either cables or um, rods coming down. They would come straight down and then they would actually go out through these holes. These holes go straight out to the outside, would connect to the rail line and maneuver whatever rails they had to adjust for switching. So that is a basic understanding of how it works. They would move it up top, it would come down here, go straight out and connect to the tracks to switch it over to a different rail. So we're gonna head down around the back side of it to the bottom because there is indeed actually a basement to this. It's where they would have the um, personal quarters for heat and cooking and you know, like a makeshift break room, I guess you could call it. Before we head into the basement, here's a look from the back side. I'll do a nice tilt up shot. You can see the scale of this building. And it's slightly starting to snow. And it has what I believe is a copper roof as well. You see the aged green copper on it. People are up above us here, but we're gonna show you what's down here. It's a little crawl space. I don't know what they're doing up there, they're making a lot of noise. Yeah. I wanted to show you too, these right here are steel supports, but they're not just any steel supports, they're actually railroad tracks. So they used extra track for steel supports. This actually may have been the coal room here. It looks like maybe a, that was a coal chute. But it is a very structurally built building. You know, it's built to last solid concrete and steel. And like I said, this is a railroad track. This is the bottom part of it. And over here is the remnants of where the coal stove used to be. That is the chimney there. And the stove would have been right there. And I think he's outside. Yeah. There's Mike. So it definitely would make an awesome little house. I would live in something like this in a heartbeat. Because the upstairs would be your bedroom area where the levers are. The middle room would be like your living room area. Down here could be your kitchen if you want it to be or vice versa. But let's head back outside now. All right, so now that we saw the uh, switching tower, we're gonna head to the actual train station, which is definitely in much worse condition like everything else, obviously, from the elements, from individuals. But we're gonna go down here though and give you a sneak peek though of something that we're gonna probably focus on a little bit more before we leave to either get some still shots or a time lapse or something else, but head on over here and show you. Just checking out the old 1913 tunnel. All right, you guys ready to see this? Is that not gorgeous or what? A beautiful cascading waterfall. So once we do finish up 
with the train station. I do want to come down here and focus on this a little bit just because it is really gorgeous. Really breathtaking, picturesque, relaxing. And I'm probably going to do a little time lapse here and probably some slow motion. And we'll see where it goes down there under the roadway. But very cool little peaceful spot. So we'll return to this though. We got to go back up to the train station. So tell me, if you guys had the opportunity, would you live in a switching tower like that? If it was converted into a home? Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Okay, we're looking back now at the switching tower. And there actually is another one further down the line, probably about a mile or two. I did film that in my first video. We may or may not get to that one today. We do have to drive to a different spot and walk a, uh, not a considerable distance, but further away than what we are right now. That one's in better shape, at least it was, but it had no levers up top. But we'll see what plays out for the rest of the video. Right now we're gonna focus our attention though on the 1915 train station. This was the successor of the original one, built in 1911, it burned down, and they built this one here. And it was used up until around the late 60s, early 70s, mainly for passenger light freight for the DLMW. And despite its decay, and deterioration it still is a very beautiful building a lot of unique elements the archways the material used with the stone the brick the shingled roof the tiles and this one has a basement as well last time i was here it was flooded and frozen but we'll see maybe we'll get lucky this time and be able to head on down there but Let's go inside and check it out. This is why I absolutely love having the wide angle. You could capture so much more. You can see a lot more from the last time I was here. That's actually a pretty gorgeous shot right here. There's actually snow falling in. And here is the basement, which is unfortunately still flooded. But my nephew Josh did crawl down there last time to get some footage. It was not really much to see. It was just a frozen block of ice.
You can see the stairs that would have went down to it. So right now I'm in the very back corner of the building where we first came in. I'm going to do a little walking tour from end to end to show you how it looks. So let's take a nice slow walk through. So we're on the other end, which brings us to the restrooms. These are tiled walls, still intact. And there would have been obviously public facilities in here. And if you look up on top, you can still see a base of a light fixture attached to the plaster around it. And again, the windows it almost resembles like a media, mid, ah, medieval place, like a little castle or dungeon. And you can see the, I forget the name of that though, the concrete material that covers the brick. It's like a type of plaster, but it is like a concrete material. So if you could let me know the name of that, I'd appreciate it. And then looking over here is the other public facility, a little bit better looking here. You can see there's Probably would have been a drain there. And the base of that light fixture has been removed. This one has a nice sunroof though. And the snow is peacefully falling through. And one thing I want to show you just from the outside here is there is a double doorway, I guess you could call it. <clears throat> so this would have been the entrance or exit from this side, the opposite side of the tracks. And I'm looking straight through to the other entrance or exit, which will lead you to the tracks. So heading outside, rail side now, you could see actually some remnants here of a platform of sorts. And again, this was double railed, would have been another set of tracks closer. So it's probably a platform for loading, unloading. And over here in the distance around the back, you can see a raised platform there, which not sure what that was used for, but now it's a makeshift seat for her all right now that they're leaving let's go check out the rest of the building i didn't want to interfere with whatever they were doing but let's go get some more exterior shots here actually a really beautiful setting right now nice and quiet no breeze and a very light snowfall. Here's what I was showing before where the girl was sitting. This is some type of concrete ramp. I don't believe I know what that's for, but I don't know if it was maybe elevated to help load something onto cars or unload. But we'll take a little better look at it and see. And you guys know what this is, right? What do I call that? Mother Nature's carpet. And fortunately, we're just walking on tiled roof, section to roof, rubble. So it's not getting any better shape. And it, ooh, that's actually very spiky. Let's not go that way. 
there was rumors that you know this place would be torn down from when I was last here. Thankfully it's not, but unfortunately it is much worse condition. But not every day you can see a station like this. This is very unique. And I'd love to see this restored. But now I think we're actually gonna get in the car, head down to where that little cascading waterfall is. And we'll do a little bonus footage there. But let's head out here. We'll do one final look from this side as if we were a passing train. So here we are looking down the tracks. We'll add in some train sound effects here. Trying to be rolling in with his whistle and arriving at the Alford train station. Picking up a little bit of cargo, dropping off passengers and continuing down the line to the next town by passing the switching tower and making another delivery, pickup, whatever you want to imagine. But, all right, that's enough of playtime. Let's go down and check out that waterfall. I think I'm about tired of the cold today. It's our second location. It's in the upper 20s. It's snowing right now. Not as windy as earlier today, but nonetheless, it is cold out. But we got some incredible footage today, and I hope you enjoyed our revisit here to the Alpha train station and switching tower. Both are really iconic structures, and I love sharing them with you guys because you may be new to my channel. You may not have seen the original video. I'm able to show you, though, and give you my thoughts as we see them today let you know what i think about it as we walk through and again the first video if you want to check it out which has full detailed history about the buildings and the train line the lackawanna cutoff that it serviced you could just watch that and get a different perspective and more information as to what we were able to check out today as for mike though i think he had a great time checking it out as well you'll find his link down below and hopefully you enjoy that little bonus footage here with the cascading waterfall i love showing nature elements and that was a beautiful little spot here that we were able to do some time lapses, slow motion, get some different stills. And don't forget to, I will share the photo montage at the end of this. And Mike is still down here getting some shots. So you can always check him out. Uh, I believe he's on Facebook and Instagram. You could probably find out those links, his Instagram link through his video, but I will put a Facebook link for his page down below on my channel. So. If you guys have any comments you'd like to share, feel free to leave them. I do appreciate the feedback and love interacting back and forth about my videos. And hopefully you stayed warm while you went on this little adventure with us because, as you can see, I am getting covered in snow. But it was, without a doubt, 100% worth coming out here today to do an updated look just shy of one year later. But with that said, I am going to wrap up the video here. I want to thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't done so, please follow me on Facebook. You can stay up to date on things. And if you donate on Patreon at least $2, you'll find out what I've been working on before anyone else does. You'll get a sneak peek and some exclusive access to upcoming projects. 
So, like I always say, until next time, I'll see you in the